It's still plus politics now. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, has accused the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, of failing to stem the tide of killings in Sakoto, Niger, Katsina, Kaduna, Plateau State, and other parts of the country. In a statement signed by the National Publicity Secretary, Debo Olugun, Olugunaba, uh, the PDP noted that the party failed to show empathy for the various attacks that led to the death of several Nigerians, but that they had time to attend the turbaning ceremony of President Muhammadu Buhari's son in the same troubled Katsina state. It urged President Muhammadu Buhari to demonstrate leadership and empathy if personally visiting or by personally visiting the troubled states in line with his campaign promise to lead the fight against terrorism from the front. Well, joining us to discuss this is Kolawale Johnson. Thank you very much, Mr. Kolawale Johnson, for joining us. Thank you. And um, good evening. Thank great. Um, it's very interesting that, um, I mean, you and I have had conversations around these issues of banditry, terrorism, killings, and hacking of people to death in their farmlands and now it's it's on a much bigger scale and we're still here having almost the same conversation um but although this time around it's not just along party lines every single person seems to be crying foul last week we saw um people from the north um protesting and saying that the president is sleeping some of the placards read that the president has abandoned the north uh, and that, the, the, you know, that there seems to be some um, form of ethnic cleansing, according to them, uh, in the North. Why do you think that we're still here at this time of the year, talking about the same things and probably wondering the same, um, you know, wondering why nothing has really incredibly been done to stem the tide of this terrorism and why it's spreading? All right. Uh, uh, there is no way you won't keep talking about an issue at hand except the issue has been resolved. So as long as the issue is not resolved, we'll keep talking about it. And especially uh, one that has to do with uh, uh, um, life. Uh, if, you, if you look at the present scenario we have in Nigeria, it appears lately we don't, uh, we don't attach much value to life again, uh, both the citizens and those in government. And uh, 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 when you had the incident in Sakwato, remember that that's, they didn't even make the headline. There was no much, you know, cry about it. So it appears killings of innocent citizens uh, these days have, have, you know, have become the new normal for us as a country, just as a COVID is the new normal for the award. So except this is tackled and Nigerians are seeing improvement in the security of lives and property. We won't stop talking about it. And, you know, we should see from the part of the government the seriousness to nail this issue, you know, once and for all. Of course, it's, it has gotten to a stage that it is difficult to, to completely eradicate it that fast. But you must have, you know, been seen to have, you know, to have made a lot of progress. But for now, uh, we've not made much progress. However, you just had a change of the army chief, I mean, of the chiefs, uh, of our security um, agencies, and let's 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 hope that uh, these guys uh, are trying their best to you know to be able to solve the situation. Of course, you understand that when there's a change in party, it takes a whole lot, not just to settle down, and in a sector like the security sector, it takes a whole lot to be able to settle down. You know, uh, be able to like come up with new strategies and you know face the battle. Um, headlong. But let's, let's see from the first quarter of next year, we should start accessing them. Of course, it'll be about a year in office then, so we should start accessing them and, you know, uh, 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 and then, of course, we'll know if they have given their best or not. But for now, we'll keep talking because the problem still lingers. Thank well, you. I, I mean, I'm curious. As much as I appreciate our armed forces, they're doing an amazing job. It's very tough to be fighting a guerrilla warfare. We to totally appreciate that. But you also said something about, you know, they're doing their best and, the, you know, giving them time. All fine and dandy. But the UAE recently um, put out names of people who are funding terrorism in this country. 
Now, we're the ones who are suffering it. There's no terrorism in the UAE, but they were first to prosecute these people. Name, shame, and prosecute them, sent them to jail. We still have people in this country allegedly funding terrorism. In fact, it, under the Good Luck administration, we heard the same thing, that there are people who are funding terrorism within the government. We're also, we've also heard that under the Bahari administration. Why, why is it so difficult to fish out these fund, the people who are funding terrorism in this country? Why is it so difficult to deal with these people, plug those loopholes? We've seen cases and cases of guns coming into this country year in, year out. And there's sensational um, headlines. There's a reportage of sorts. And after a while, it dies off. Nothing is being done about it. So I ask, where is the political will in fighting this terrorism that the uh, APC administration promised Nigerians to fight? In fact, this is one of the reasons why Nigerians voted massively for President Buhari. So where is all of that energy? Where is um, the sense of urgency to deal with this? Uh, first, you know, some of us are guilty. Uh, uh, okay, let me say we are partly guilty for this because under the last administration, we had our voice, you know, uh, 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 very strong across platforms. We are advocating for uh, a better government response to the insecurity we had in the country. Even though that time, it wasn't this bad. Of course, it wasn't at this uh, level. And unfortunately, even when we shouted then, you had the government then trying to do so. I mean, of course, they would come up with some few things. But it appears that uh, bringing in a general with a track record of of a uh, of a uh, of a good showing in such insurgency like this, of course, it, it did with Mr. Tassin then. So we were thinking that it would be better. But for me, in all honesty, um, I am not afraid to own on that we 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 thought it would be better. But it's actually not better now as we speak. I mean, there's not. I mean, you can't. You know, you can't hide that. And to make it worse, I do not understand uh, what constitutes a president's KPIs. How he measures performance, I don't know. Take, for example, when he sent the former IG to go to Benue then, 2018 or thereabouts, you know, to go, you know, address the situation. IG did not go. But what happened? Practically nothing happened. Number one, number two, when the president came into the country sometimes back and he saw the former IG too, he said, because the man was not adding weight, that it shows that he was working. So again, you wonder, how does the president measure performance? So if his yardsticks for measuring performance is, you know, is faulty, one thing you can be so sure of is this. You won't be able to, you know, uh, to get the best for him, you know, from him. And as far as now is concerned, we are not getting the best. Now, let me uh, take us uh, uh, back to memory lane. Now, when this started, I keep on saying that if, we are sure that the government is taking the right steps. Nobody will blame the government. Of course, we'll be cheering them on because we know that security is the business of everyone. But see this, when, this, when, when they started this, I mean, when they came into the office, Boko Haram was, you know, was faced headlong. As at that time, we knew that those guys were escaping and getting into the different, you know, uh, 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 hideout. In the world that they would strike, we were making a lot of noise then that, it, that the government should move to those places and finish them once and for all. Now, when they started metamorphosing to bandits and they were getting to people's farms, burning their farms, burning villages, we kind of, you know, noticed that the government, rather than taking them on headlong, were romancing these people. Remember, it was the government that came up with that cliche, farmers, headers, uh, uh, Class. classes. Mm -hmm. I do not understand, sorry, hold on, I do not understand how a, how a group of people will walk into a farmland, burn the farmland, burn the villages, and you call that clashes? No, that is terrorism. You know, people terrorizing others in their own land, in their own farm. Then later, the government came up with banditry. So all of these steps they have taken shows clearly that it appears the government was already, you know, to take uh, uh, to take on these guys once and for all. But when it appeared to them that these guys have become monsters. Now, 
and they are trying to move against them, it is costing the nation more, it is costing the people more, and unfortunately, right now, it is even beyond the government. And I keep saying this, that as long as we can see that the government is trying to do, you know, you know, to do something in the right direction, we will share the government. And lately, I can tell you, I can tell you by intel that the government is, is, is really taking these guys on. We may not be seeing the full result now. I keep saying by first quarter of next year, we should be seeing tremendous improvement in the situation. I guess the curiosity on every other person's mind is why did government have to wait this long? Just as you said, giving it different names and trying to paint it in a different light. Now, it's not just happening in the north. Let's not forget it has spread all the way down south. Look at what's happening in Imo State. As at the weekend, we saw about uh, 58 people being killed in Borunu in Kaduna State. And what mostly the PDP is saying here is that the heartlessness, um, according to them, it's their words, not mine, uh, of the, the APC-led leadership um, prioritizing pomp and ceremony over the lives of people. And my question to you, sir, is why have, how have we gotten to this place? How did we get here to a point where there's no value for life? We, we've gotten to a point where we don't really care. They have become numbers. How did we get here? And where do we go from here? All right. Uh, um. If the PDP today is accusing APC, remember 2014 when they was it 2014 yeah when they kidnapped the Chibo girls, good luck Jonathan and the PDP entourage. They went to Kano to hold you know to hold a rally and they were dancing. That is the way of politician. They would always go you know for what will profit them more politically mm -hmm. than for what will profit the people. That is why you can't afford to have you know dealers in government. You must when, see when you see leaders who take the people first, they won't do that. And do not forget that I've explained before, perhaps on your platform, that most most times what we have in this country, we've been having transactional leaders, people who believe more in their pocket. A call to government in Nigeria is not seen as a call to sell, it is seen as rather a call to the table to chop. So if that is how we see government, so these people would not really take you and I serious. They will take whatsoever will line their pockets more, much more seriously. How did we get to the stage that we no longer have the kind of value we should have for life? Now, let's press it back to the society. The value we have as the people, we've practically lost it. Now, go to those days in the villages, you know, in the communities. If you have a man coming to the community with some strange money, Perhaps it will become an outcast. People will really want, they will really want to associate with him. But today, come with the money to the same community from anywhere. You will get chieftaincy title. In fact, the king will embrace you. The boys will be shouting your name. So the value system we have in the country has collapsed. And unfortunately, that was the, you know, the fabric that tends to hold us you know, strongly as of that time. So right now, that has dovetailed to practically every sector. And the moment something keeps occurring, at first, it looks like a big deal. Now, by the second time, the thought, the moment it becomes a norm, it will hardly attract the value it should attract. So we've gotten to that level in Nigeria. There are killings, of course, it is practically daily. So when it was happening once in a while, we were shouting. When kidnapping was only once in a while. Can you imagine the, the, the level of noise during cheap work, you know, girls? But that is no longer the case today. Mm. They kidnapped some folks in Kaduna. Parents are to contribute 183 million naira to free their own children. And you have the government do nothing. You have the president comfortable in the villa. Of course, eating fat on the taxpayers' money, leaving the people to bear the brunt. Now, let me explain some. I mean, let me just notify you that I know a family that sold everything they had, including the you know, the only house, the only home that the man retired and put all his retirement benefits on to, you know, to complete. They had to sell just to pay for ransom to free their daughter. Now come, now come back to that same man. How do you want him to have value for life or wish Nigeria well? So until we have a reduction in the stand, and we are getting back to normal again in the society, and people can actually value life as it should be, I doubt if this will make any big deal again to us mm. as long as it remains a daily affair. 
Okay. Well, I want to say thank you. Uh, Kola Ole Johnson is a political affairs commentator. Thank you so much for being part of this conversation. We appreciate your thoughts, and this is where we wrap it up. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break uh, to listen to what Nigerians have to say about the Electoral Act bill. And when we return, I will give you my take. You see, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I, there, there's no difference between National Assembly and the President. So we shouldn't expect anything spectacular. Uh, because the National Assembly are just... Um, an extension of the presidency. So if Buhari is not willing to sign, you shouldn't expect anything different from National Assembly. So we don't have an active um, assembly, you know, that can act on the behalf of the people. Well, if the president fails to append his signature, I think the lawmaker should override his power by passing the a electoral bill into law. Well, um, that's, it's, it's tough to say this exactly is what they should do because uh, most of them in the House are of the same party. Um, the, the chairman of the party himself might need to, to, to put in what, or is the, is the electoral law actually what the people in the House want? So there's so many questions around why the president is not, has not signed it into law yet. And I'm not sure that even the members of the House are the right people to do the job because uh, they are of the same party. The way our uh, electoral processes have been going, you see all those kind of... Uh, I think where we record more of uh, corruption is in the electoral processes. By the time elections are done and all those things, uh, we have rigging and all sorts of corruptions coming into that. I think by the time uh, Mr. President, by name uh, Muhammad Buhari, should uh, I think put this into consideration and let this in be enacted into law, there should be electoral reforms. So I'll be able to amend, you know, where that are not favorable to our own you know, country, because we do not have any other country to call our own if it is not Nigeria. So it's a proper thing that the president should facilitate any problem, any, whatever that will make this in work. So it will be put into law and there will be reforms on our electoral processes and I, I believe we will have changes. Here's my take. Now, we as Nigerians complain daily on a daily app about how nonchalant our politicians are in terms of adding value to life, placing value on the lives of people that die every day, the cost of living, how Nigeria is being run. But we fail to look at ourselves because we're part of the problem. We no longer value ourselves. We take those 1,000s and the 500s. We go to those their campaigns that they tell us the same thing every single campaign year. We take the rice and the wrapper and we go home. Why would they place value on us? People are dying in the north. People are dying in the south. People are dying even in the north central. We're seeing all kinds of bedeviling things. Even in the Yuletide season, the terrorists and the bandits are killing people. But yet, our politicians are dancing. They're participating in pomp and ceremony. You can't really blame the politician isolatedly. We have to blame ourselves until we take responsibilities. And that responsibility means that you have to hold every single politician, starting from your uh, councillor to the, the chairman in your local government, to the man who represents you at the, your state house of assembly, the man who represents you at the national assembly. If you do not take responsibility and make sure that these people are accountable to you, they will never feel any form of accountability to us because it's business as usual for these people. You can no longer protest. You can no longer go on social media where you could easily protest on Twitter. It's been banned. What else will be banned? Nigerians, we have to step up to the place. Until we do that, all we will do continuously is complain. And complaining is not going to change anything for us. They promised us change, but we haven't seen anything close to change. So the ball is in your court. Make sure that your politician, your leader is accountable. Only you can make that happen. I am Mary Anakal. Have a good evening.